Hi, I'm Kirk Harbinger, and this is Bethany Gagné. She's the founder of Numinous and also the Albany Peace Project. This is a first in a series of four videos that we'll be holding uh, throughout the month of January on Sundays. And we're going to be talking about the purpose of Numinous, how you got started, and also how that relates to the Albany Peace Project and where things like coherence come into play uh, throughout. So, welcome. Thank you, Kurt, very much. So how did, how did the Albany uh, Peace Project, and, and really before that, Numinous, get started? Well, uh, I've been teaching biofeedback and self-mastery for 20 years. And what I've seen over those 20 years is that when people learn how to harness their physiology, they learn how to harness themselves. And so what was always amazing to me, what awed me, is that people would come, I'd often have them commit to three sessions, and at the end of the three sessions, there would be this amazing creativity. Like all of a sudden they'd kind of flourish and blossom in creativity. And I'd watch it over and over and over again. And I've, I would often think to myself, you know, this information needs to get out to more people. That we have this gorgeous uh, intelligence and creativity within us. And if we just learn how to cultivate this intelligence, then life becomes much more of what I often say, the magical mystery tour it was supposed to be. <laughs> and so how did that evolve into this effort that you call the Albany Peace Project? Well, biofeedback is essentially, again, um, teaching people how to focus the mind in the body to create change. So what I've observed for 20 years is that wherever the mind is in the body, when it's focused like a laser, there's an impact, that the mind has impact. And so that, and, and when you feel that and you experience it and you rely on it, it it's very empowering. And you start to want to um, use it in other areas of your life. What, so couple that knowledge with some of the research that I started uh, hearing about or learning about, the Transcendental Meditation Research, where they would take a, a, a group of meditators in high conflict areas of the world, and there seemed to be this corresponding reduction in violence in those areas. And Lynn McTaggart having people send intentions to uh, more areas of greater crime, um, that there seems to be somewhat of an impact. So for me, it was just a natural outgrowth of you know, of using these same internal skills and not just using it for our own personal growth, but to actually lift it to uplift society. I mean, I can't think of anything more empowering or wonderful that I want to spend my life on. And so, so describe the effort specifically that, uh, that, you're, that you're using in the Albany Peace Project and what is it that you're really trying to accomplish? Well, this year we're um, really working on teaching people about this gorgeous place within them known as coherence. I often consider coherence as kind of like the sweet spot in your nervous system. You know how tennis rackets have a sweet spot when you just hit the ball just right in that area and it just pings so beautifully? That's coherence. That's the beauty. And people need to know that they, they have this place of uh, beauty within them known as coherence and to teach them the skills how to reliably and systematically get there. And when we get there, all good things happen. We make better decisions, we get along better with people, we are, what I often say, happy for no good reason. Um, we just uh, are more buoyant and we're more resilient to take on life's challenges. So, it, so what you're trying to do with the Albany Peace Project is to, through intention, through coherence, yes. is to reduce what amount of crime in Albany? Yes, there is evidence to suggest um, that 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 could happen and so we're uh, scheduled to do this. It's a 10-year project and over these 10 years we're hoping to gather the um, group of meditators who people who are trained. The research suggests that the more people who are trained in these skills the more of an impact there can be that can be measured. Um, either way, whether the results show it or not, I will tell you that people will feel fabulous <laughs> because these skills work if you work them. Um, they just, it can't not work. So as long as we stay diligent to the practice and become more and more proficient and skilled at it, you, you know, we will feel fabulous. Uh, people have told me that last year, um, not only at the end of January, that they again went into a flurry of creativity, but that how much it profoundly impacted them and positively changed their entire year um, based on learning these skills. And what was it in January that they experienced? Oh, the Albany Peace Project last year, sorry. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, so tell us a little bit more about uh, how you can practice uh, coherence and where numinous comes into play with your programming. Uh, what is it that you're really trying to accomplish 
through Numinous. Right. Well, all of Numinous programs and the Albany Peace Project is to teach people about their nervous system and how it works. I've often thought how cool it would be if when we were born, God or Source or whatever the creative urge said to us, hey, just thought you might like to know. You know, you were born with this nervous system, and if you know how it works, if you don't know how it works, life can be a real struggle and an uphill battle. But if you do know how it works, then when life sends you challenges, you're able to kind of ride through them much more elegantly. So to me, the whole um, purpose is to teach people about this their nervous system, how to go into this beautiful space, and in that beautiful space, we gain access to a greater intelligence, a greater understanding, greater wisdom, and we end up kind of coming home to ourselves and from that place of knowing and sweetness we're able to kind of craft a much more uh, skillful and beautiful life. So we can practice things on our own to raise consciousness, awareness, etc., coherence and you're saying that if we pool our energies together yes. that will have an impact on other people, other situations, Absolutely, um, and there is more and more evidence to suggest that. There's something called limbic resonance, where my nervous system is probably influencing your nervous system right now. My ECG, my heart rate, is regi maybe registered on your brain waves right now. We impact each other in ways that we don't even know, but the research is starting to bear out. So how far can we take this? I don't know, but that's the fun of it, isn't it? That's great. <laughs> any, anything else, that uh, other stories that you have, uh, examples of, of folks being able to impact their own lives or even, even again others right. uh, that you have. Well, I, I will tell you that the hallmark of this coherent state is something called greater heart rate variability and we'll talk more about that in the future interviews here but um, essentially what we're going to be having people do is focus in their heart and do something called a heart lock-in and uh, research suggests with the Institute of Heart Math who we're collaborating with this year that um, that in this stage of coherence all these good things happen but let me just tell you what it happens in, in everyday life. Uh, I gave a talk recently in Saratoga, and a woman um, and I did. I led people into a more of a coherent state. And two days later, a woman came to a numinous program, and she said to me, "Wow, that coherence uh, meditation really made a difference." And I said, "Well, how so?" And she said, "Well, first of all, my I just felt beautiful tears kind of coming down my face, a, a joy basically. And then she also said that um, she just was so happy." And that's what I always say about the coherent state, is you are happy for no good reason, okay? Life has still got the challenges going on, you've still got things you're facing, but all, you'll just be buoyant. You just kind of have this ability to kind of be very resilient, and you just, and you become happy. And from that happy space, we are much more effective and available to society. We're much, we can make a much greater impact in the world, even when life is challenging us, if we're in a coherent state. That's great stuff. So what you're saying is that we have all these tools in front of us that we can tap into. Uh, we're able to influence ourselves and our greater community. Yes. Therefore the world. And, um, and so it's, it sounds like there's a little bit of science behind this. Yes. So can, can you share with us a little bit more about that science and how heart math uh, comes into play here and really what, uh, what that's all about and, and how it affects us. Sure, sure. Well, as I said, coherence, the hallmark of coherence is something called heart rate variability. Your heart is the biggest oscillator of the body. It puts off the biggest electromagnetic signal. When the heart puts off um, a coherent signal, all of our systems work in tandem. They work together synergistically. When our heart works in, um, when it becomes incoherent, then all of our systems kind of are, are incoherent. They don't work together. So, um, so this has an amazing impact because essentially, when the heart's in a coherent state, your hormonal system works better, your digestive system works better, your muscular system works better. All of your systems work um, together much better. And simply by focusing in the heart, which is what every one of the meditations this um, January are going to do, the protocol includes a five minute, what the Institute of Heart Math has licensed us to use for just this month, is something called a heart lock-in. So we're going to be focusing our mind in our heart, but not just kind of hanging it out there to kind of nurse resentments or whatever. We're actually focusing it in the heart and then reaching for better emotions reaching for the emotions of care, concern, appreciation. And through that reach, and by anchoring in the heart, it puts off this coherent signal which influences your brain waves, which puts you into a much more beautiful, sublime state and has, um, makes your thinking better, your relationships better, everything, all good things. <laughs> wow.
Exactly. So, wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you're saying that uh, if you're able to bring your mind and your body to that state, not only does it bring better emotions, <clears throat> uh, a more healthy aspects in your life, but you're able to also sort of, can, can I say, shield off uh, the bad influences, it helps build that shield, you know, so to speak? Yes, absolutely, and the research actually uses the word to shield off as resilience, right? We become highly resilient, so if you think of resilience as a battery, and um, when you're charged, you have the, the charge in you to manage life. I always say you can handle anything if you had a good night's sleep. You know, right? When you haven't had a bad night's sleep, you have bad night's sleep, you know. But if you had a good night's sleep, something bad happens, you can handle it, right? Um, so that's kind of that. Are you charged? Um, and that's what coherence does, is enable us to stay more on the charged aspect, or, or keep our batteries charged to be able to meet life in general. So That's great. Good. Well, we'll be uh, talking more about coherence, resilience, yes. and, uh, and more about Numinous and the Albany Peace Project throughout these four videos throughout uh, January. So uh, I'd like to, like to continue on this, uh, this path with you, and we'll hear more from Bethany shortly. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Kirk, very much. Thanks.